Hey guys, I'm Tim with Bleepin' Jeep. In today's video, we'll be installing an Aussie locker and a Ford 9 inch axle. Let's get to it. I've gone ahead and removed the third member from the axle housing, cleaned up where the old gasket was, and have it up here on my workbench. One of the first things I want to do before pulling the bearing caps off and pulling the carrier out of this third member is check the backlash on it. This rear end has been in my Jeep as is for about 30,000 miles and I know that I don't have any problems with the way it is now. So I want to check this backlash with the dial indicator so I know exactly where it's at so we can reset it to uh, where it is and it looks like it's reading right between eight and nine thousands pretty close to nine thousands uh, i think generally 10 is what you want on used gears um, so this is just info to keep in our mind for when we set this back up so we know where it was at and maybe we'll shoot for 10 but we certainly don't want it any tighter than that for backlash a general rule of thumb with automotive parts is to reassemble them in the same way that they were set up before you took it apart. And so this bearing cap right here, you can see that someone has been in here before and they put a single mark on it. And this side there are actually two with corresponding marks right here on the inside of the, the flange. And on this side over here, two marks as well. So someone has already marked those for us and that is great. We'll keep track of these bearing caps and the marks go up on both sides. The next thing that we're gonna do is take off these two clips that hold our our backlash adjust, adjusters in place. You're going to want to keep a container uh, nearby so you can put all these parts in it. Some people like to keep track of which bolt went where. I'm not worried about that. As long as the bearing cap ends up on the same side, I think we're good. Make sure this thing doesn't come rolling out on you. With the bearing caps removed, you can see how these adjusters work on the 9 inch. And the, uh, the case here is threaded, as is the cap that we just took off on both sides. And so what this allows you to do to adjust backlash, which is simply the relation between the ring gear and the pinion gear, you, have to, you may have to move this whole thing left or right and that can be simply done by loosening this retainer and tightening that one or vice versa and that will shift this entire thing back and forth giving you a proper backlash setup so that's a pretty cool feature of the Ford 9 inch I took a minute and threw together this very simple spanner wrench tool just drilled a couple holes and put some bolts in it and this lines up perfectly with these adjusters and then I'll be able to uh, just start backing these things off Once you have these loosened up just a little bit, this thing is pretty much ready to, to come out of here. Just gonna have to rotate it out of the pinion a little bit. There we go. I went ahead and pulled the third member off the table to give us some more room. I haven't started disassembling this ring gear from the carrier at all. It's a good practice to, to indicate the orientation of the ring gear to the the carrier here just so you can make sure everything goes back exactly the same uh, something as simple as a sharpie will take care of that so i'm just going to put a, a uh, real basic black line all the way across the parts here just so i can make sure that everything ends up exactly where it was now this came out of a 40 year old truck and i'm seeing signs that people have been in here before and that's real interesting to see the ring gear actually has some indentations in various spots where I guarantee someone was using a strike tool and pounding it off of here. Now we can go ahead and remove our 10 ring gear bolts. This 
So I've come down to the cement floor. I have the, the whole unit here in a milk crate so when this ring gear comes off and falls, the teeth don't hit the ground, won't chip the floor or potentially chip one of the, te one of the teeth off. I'm just using a, a two by four and a, a dead blow here. I'm just gonna start working my way all the way around this thing. It might fall over a few times, but just give it some good wax and it'll come off eventually. And we're, we're contacting this thing right on the ring gear itself. Yep, you can see this gap forming already. Right there. See the ring gear is starting to come off. Be patient. Don't use a metal object on the ring gear like someone has done to this one in the past. It's just not necessary. There it is. Alright, let's take this puppy back to the bench. Next thing we need to do is separate these halves. Hopefully they come apart pretty easily. I'm gonna try to I'm gonna start by using my dead blow, but I may have to resort to a metal hammer and we'll just work all the way around this. So it turns out that didn't work at all. This thing is pretty stuck. I really don't want to beat on it too much with a metal uh, ball peen because I don't, I don't want to leave dents all over it. So I just made this drift punch out of an old drill bit that was laying around, a big long roto hammer drill bit. I sanded the whole thing down and put a taper on it and it fits. There's like an extracurricular hole here for the uh, cross pin and roll pin that would go here. Same setup that's here. But what I'm hoping is that with the whole case suspended between these two 2x4s, I'll be able to drop this in right there and with some light hammering separate the halves. Yep, there it goes. Perfect. That works great. Now we're finally inside this thing. In a heavier duty application, you very well might have four spider gears with a thrust block. It's a square block that goes in the middle here. In my case, I do not have that. At this point, we can go ahead and start removing the internals from each one of these halves, starting with this side gear. We'll just slip right out. And generally there is a thrust washer on the back. And we'll wanna keep track of which washer goes with which side gear. So I'm gonna keep everything left, left, right, right. So let's place this right over here. Now we need to remove this cross pin. This roll pin is in really bad shape. It's, it was obviously broken. <laughs> there was a piece of it. It was obviously broken when I pulled this whole thing out of the Jeep. I saw it right away. So it will certainly be replacing what's left of that. Never taken a roll pin out in so many pieces. <laughs> Perfect. Okay, with our roll pin out of the way, this cross pin should just slide right out of here. Turn this so you can see. Then our spider gears will just come right out. These have thrust washers on the back as well. We'll pull this side gear out and don't forget it's washer as well. This would be a great time to clean everything up to your liking. That way everything's nice and fresh for reassembly. With both of our halves cleaned up, we're now ready to start the actual locker install. Let's take a look at this thing. That's what I like to see. One of the first steps is to apply a little bit of grease to each of the components. We'll start with the back side here. This will help keep the thrush washer in place. That's probably more grease than we need, but we'll just spread this all the way around. And now we're gonna to start to keep track of our, our left and right sides here again, keeping everything where they go. So you can see that's gonna hold our, our washer in place, make everything easier to assemble. I we'll want some grease on the uh, around this hub area too and on these teeth also. All right, that's plenty on this side. Now we'll repeat over here. We can go ahead and start putting our components into the carrier halves, starting with the axle gears. 
I'm going to push down and spin it a little bit, make sure it's all the way in place and spinning smoothly on the grease, which it is. Next, I'll put a cam gear in place. Teeth are meshed up. Now our thrust block. This is a really tight machine fit. You can tell that's just high quality American made goodness right there. We'll line that up so our cross shaft goes in place. Now we need to start placing our springs and pins into the holes. These cam gears are identical. There's no left or right or anything like that. These springs will go in the slots and the pins with the little step on them will go in the holes like that. We'll probably want to apply just a little bit of grease to help hold everything in place because we're going to take this unit and put it upside down on top of the other one. Don't need to add any grease to the bottom side necessarily. Well, this will stay put. Flip this over. I'm going to make sure everything's seated and lined up. It seems like it is. Now this side axle gear will go on. We've added just a touch of grease to the, the rim here. It's our six o'clock position, six o'clock position where we've marked it. We can go ahead and start bolting the ring gear on now, or I did pick up some fine thread nuts that fit the original ring gear bolts. And if we want to, we can seat this thing without the ring gear which can sometimes be easier by putting these bolts, four, four of the ten bolts, in an even fashion like that, like that, and uh, tighten this thing up a little bit, which I'll do just to seat these together. Once your case halves are tightly together, you can go ahead and remove the bolts. The halves will likely not separate on you. The next thing I'm going to do is install this new roll pin or tension pin. This one is way too long, but it's going to allow us to seat it in all the way. Then we'll just take a zip wheel and buzz the top off real quick. Okay, that's all the way down. We'll snap the rest of that off of the hammer. I don't want to accidentally cut the carrier. My ring gear is nice and warm. I've had it sitting outside in the sun, and that should help it expand a little bit. That should help it fit over this better. Remember, we indexed, there it is, right there, which corresponds to the big Sharpie line on the ring gear, right there. Now, if you don't have any sunshine, another way you can heat this up to help it install a little more easily is to uh, put this in a freezer bag or a big Ziploc bag that's watertight and dip the whole thing in a big tub of boiling water and heat this up. It'll actually expand ever so slightly and just drop right into position as you can see this one did. I have two bolts just loosely started here by hand so that this thing won't fall off and uh, now I need to get some red Loctite and we'll apply it to the rest of the bolts. I've cleaned all the holes here and the threads with brake clean so everything is grease free and the Loctite will adhere to it quite well. I'm using red Loctite and I'm just going to do one at a time and make sure it starts by hand here. We'll repeat this with all the bolts. Then I'll run them in with the impact real lightly. And if you're doing this, make sure that you look up your, your uh, vehicle's torque specs for the ring gear and you'll want to torque all these to spec.
So I have this thing cleaned up, a little bit of brake clean. I'm going to apply just a little bit of grease to the, the areas where we're going to be working. We'll start by getting our adjusters in place, making sure that they thread in like they're supposed to, that nothing's crossed. Okay, that's good for now. Now we need to get our bearing caps on loosely. Remember our indicators here, one and one, two and two. And we will be adding red Loctite to these bolts also, but for now we just need to get our backlash readjusted. I want to make sure these bolts are lined up and threading in by hand, and that the threads mesh up with the adjuster. We'll go ahead and tighten these down all the way by hand in just a tiny little, just a tiny bit snugger than with the wrench, not much at all. Okay. Now that these are hand tight, we can start getting ready to make our backlash adjustment. And what we're going to do is back the uh, right side off here just a little bit. And then we're going to tighten this side about the same amount. And what that's doing is it's forcing the ring gear into the pinion. And we want to do that until there's zero backlash. So right there, it's tight. There's absolutely no backlash. Now what we're going to do is set up our dial indicator and start backing this side off as we tighten this side until we have that, that backlash number that we desire. Uh, it was about 8.5, 9, somewhere in there. Maybe we'll shoot for 10. But we'll do that by moving the whole unit over as we loosen this side and tighten that side, maintaining preload on the bearings. I moved the camera now that I have the dial set up just so you guys can see it a little better. And as you can see here, there's no rock at all. It's staying zero. So now we're going to back this thing out just a little bit. It's about one hole at a time. And at the same time, we're going to tighten this that same amount so that we keep good preload on our bearings. Now let's check our backlash after we zero our gauge. So as you can see now we have a little bit of backlash, but we still need more. So again, we'll loosen this about one hole at a time. Then we'll tighten this side about one hole, zero our gauge, and check backlash again. There we go. Now we're at seven, so we'll go another hole. With a little more finagling, I was able to get this to exactly ten, number I was looking for. Now that we're dialed in pretty good, I'm going to pull these bolts out one at a time and add Loctite to them. And before we torque this to spec, we're going to double check to make sure our backlash is still what we want. And we're still within spec. We're about 10 thousandths of an inch backlash. Perfect. Last thing to do here is to install these retaining clips. Whoa. And that's just to make sure that these don't do unwanted movements inside our axle housing. Tight enough. Alright guys, that's it for today's video. At that point, you're ready to install a gasket of your choice, whether that's RTV or a pre-made gasket like I prefer, and put the third member back in the axle. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to give us a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. We really appreciate it. Also, check out this video right over here. You might like it just as much. See you guys in the next video.